Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 13 Minute AE Tutorials, where you learn tips, tricks, and shortcuts in 13 minutes or less. No BS, just AE. In this episode, we're gonna be talking all about pick whipping. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term, it's how you create a parent-child relationship between two layers or two properties. Most motion graphic designers are familiar with pick whipping, but to a very limited degree. Chances are, at one time or another, you've pick whipped multiple layers to a null, or maybe one layer to another so they follow each other. But there's a lot more to pick whipping than you may realize. I'm going to show you several ways to increase your speed, streamline your workflow, and make life in general so much easier by simply pick whipping the right properties to one another. This is one of those episodes where you will learn techniques that you can use every single day. Please like this video so I can get into the good graces of that elusive YouTube algorithm. Share this video with your friends, colleagues, and coworkers, and click the bell so that way you're notified every time I upload a new video. And drop what you learned from this episode into the comments below. I'd love to see the results. Now, there's a lot to get through, so let's dive right in. Okay, so the process of pick whipping is when you take the values of one layer or property called the child and you pick whip it to the values of another layer or property called the parent. If you've used After Effects for any length of time, you've most likely pick whipped one layer to another one so that the child is gonna follow the parent's motion. It doesn't copy any effects and it doesn't follow the opacity. So whenever you pick whip a child to a parent layer, you're going to be taking the scale, position, anchor point, and rotation of the parent. So you're very limited if you just pick whip a layer in this way. Or maybe you've added a null and then you pick whip both layers to the null, which would basically make the null the parent and the icons the children. So those are the most basic and common ways that you can pick whip a layer to another layer or a layer to a null. And you may think that the concept of pick whipping is super basic and in some respects you'd be correct. One layer of property takes on some value of another layer of property. But there are things you can do to really make this relationship work to your advantage in a much more complex way, especially when you start to add more expressions to the pick whip expression. Now notice if you pick whip one layer to the next and you hit EE, you get no expression. And that's because we're telling this layer to follow that layer. However, if you start to pick whip properties, say for example, opacity, if we click EE to get our expression, we see now we have an expression on this property. So whenever you start to pick whip specific properties, that's when you can really take advantage of the process of pick whipping. You can come up with some really cool things. I'm gonna show you a few examples where doing this could really work to your advantage and save you from having to create a lot of keyframes or taking time to get values to the precise location where they need to be by simply adding mathematical expressions to pick whip expressions. And the first one we can actually do is for opacity. Now that we've pick whipped this opacity from layer one to layer two, if we lower our parent opacity, the child follows. So what if we wanted our opacity on layer one to be the exact opposite of the opacity on layer two? If you come to the end of this expression and you type times negative one, as you can see, it's not gonna have the effect that we want because basically it's saying 100 times negative one. Whenever you pick up these properties, just keep in mind that you're taking the value of a certain property and you're using that in a mathematical way. What you can do is now you can add 100. And so now if you watch as you manipulate the opacity of the parent, the child reacts in an opposite way. And you may need something like this in one of your projects. And it's just like a really cool way to kind of take advantage of pick whipping and get some effects that you're like really looking for. So let's go through a few more examples real quick. I'm gonna get rid of these shape layers and let's just go ahead and add in a shape layer. And we're gonna make that an ellipse and we're gonna give that a fill. Okay, maybe we'll make this a little bit larger. And then let's duplicate that, close these up. So now if we hit P on our keyboard, we have our position. If we just pick up our position, nothing really happens. And the thing about this that you need to keep in mind, I'm gonna make this a different color, is that whenever you pick up position, it's just copying the same exact position. So it's putting it on top of the parent. One thing you can do is you can separate the dimensions and now say maybe you want to pick up just the X position. So now you have control over the Y. You can go in the opposite direction and pick up the Y position. So now you have control over the X. And then these will always stay together on the Y axis. So that's one way you can pick what position, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna put these dimensions back. And so now let's open up these and we wanna go into our contents and to our ellipse path. Again, I'm gonna pull up position. If you notice our position on these layers are 960 by 540. That's the relative location of our object to the comp. This comp is 1920 by 1080. So 960 by 540 is the center point. 
Well, inside of shape layer paths, notice our position is zero, zero. This position of this ellipse path is zero pixels from our layer. So the ellipse path is relative to the layer. The layer is relative to the comp. And that's an important distinction to make because now that we have these values for position set at zero, zero, we can actually do some really cool things with this. And I'm just going to pick whip my position on layer one ellipse path to the ellipse path of layer two. And then I'm going to open up our position here and we're going to add in times negative one. So now watch what happens whenever I start to manipulate the position of this ellipse path. So as I move down, notice they move in opposite directions and that's true on both X and Y. So maybe you have an animation, for example, where you need two dots to be going in opposite directions. So what you can do is move these like that. And these will always be the exact opposite position in your comp. Let's make these easy ease. And then if you alt or option click on position of your parent layer and type in loop out and we'll add in a loop out expression. So like maybe you want to add in like a blur. So this is one of those situations where pick whipping the position of an ellipse path, adding times negative one can really yield some cool results. Okay, so let's go over another example. I'm going to create a gear. I'm going to go up to my effects panel and I've already created a preset for a gear. The way that this works is you just double click on the preset. You don't have to even add a shape layer. It adds it for you. And now let's duplicate this and I'm going to pull up my position scale and rotation. So first I'm just going to offset this. I'm not going to pick whip this position. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick whip my scale down to this scale. If we open that up, if we type in times 0.5 or you can do divided by two, it's going to make our child gear half the size. And then I want to pick up the rotation of one down to two. Let's add in an expression on this rotation on the parent layer. We'll say time times 100. And if we play it back, we see how they turn. Now, if you've ever done an animation like this, you know you want the smaller gear to move in the opposite direction. Go to this rotation on the child layer and type in times negative two. A smaller gear is going to move twice as fast. And maybe we'll offset that a little bit better so it fits in better. So something kind of like that. So in this example, there are no keyframes. We just pick whipped a few different properties and added in some expressions. If you want your parent to go in the opposite direction, do times negative 100. And the smaller gear will always go in the opposite direction because we have this times negative two. Duplicate the smaller one, open up our expressions by EE, multiply this times two to make it bigger. And then I'm gonna pull up my position so that way I can pull this over. So maybe we have something like this. And now we need this rotation to go half as fast times negative 0.5. And we're going negative again because this is gonna be relative to our parent here. So now if you play that back, you see how our larger gear is always gonna be twice as slow. So you can get a very accurate rendition of how gears animate just by parenting a few properties and adding in these mathematical expressions. Okay, so let's do another example. This is something that is very common in infographics. Let's add in a new shape layer and then I'm going to add in a group. And within that group, let's add in an ellipse. And then we're going to add in, I'll do a fill just for purposes of illustration here. Let's increase this a little bit. So say like if we wanted to make a pie chart, the way I always do it is using a trim paths. However, if you've ever used trim paths, you know that it doesn't really work on fills. Trim paths only trims paths. It doesn't trim fills. So if we wanted to make this pie chart animate in, the way you do that is add in a stroke, remove this fill, and then we're going to add in a trim paths. For this to animate in in a way where it makes sense to illustrate a pie chart, you want to pick up your stroke width to your ellipse size. So stroke width to size. This will animate on like a pie chart. So that's the key to animating a pie chart. You always want to pick up your stroke width to the size of your ellipse path. Okay, so let's pull the trim paths inside of this group one, duplicate group one, and then open up our stroke settings. And let's just change the color of this to, it can be anything. And now if we watch it back, we see how they're on top of one another. However, if you offset these and then change your value on the second group to maybe say 75, you have something that looks like this. Let's duplicate and we'll make that look at green. You to bring up our keyframes, offset these and make your end value say 45. You can add a lot of these in. The key to this animation is that you want to make sure that you're pick whipping your stroke width to your ellipse path size. You can also pick whip effects. So let's go up to effect and we're going to generate a fill. Copy that fill and put it on our child layer. Both of these highlighted. Go to your search bar and just type in fill. And now we have our fill settings right here. Pick whip this color on the child layer up to the parent layer. Anytime we change the color, it's going to change it on the child as well. Well, one of the things you can do on your child layer is you can actually add in some mathematical expressions to get some really cool effects. 
So let's like maybe multiply that by two and you'll get a shade. So see, as this gets darker, the one on the right is lighter, but it moves with it. And you can just kind of play with these values a little bit. You can try some division. So maybe you want to do divided by two to make it darker. So if you have any kind of animation that requires shades, just remember if you pick whip the fill of your child to the fill of your parent, and then on the child layer, add in some mathematical expressions, mainly multiplication and division, you will get some really cool results. But you can't pick whip everything. And let's just, I'll show you a quick example. So let's add in a shape layer, and I'm gonna give this shape layer a rectangle and a stroke. And we'll just kind of increase this a little bit. Open up our stroke settings. Okay, and then let's duplicate this layer open up our settings. So see now you can pick up the size of a rectangle path to the other and see how they work together. Pick up the position to position times negative one. As we move these positions, they're going to move in opposite directions. You can even pick up the roundness. So see these stay together. So see we can pick up the color. We can pick up the opacity. So pretty much anything that has this pick up next to it can be put into this parent-child relationship. And I say almost anything because with shape layers, you cannot pick whip line cap and line join, even though we have a pick whip right here. You would think you could just bring this up there and it would create a parent-child relationship. So just keep in mind that you can't always pick whip anything with a pick whip next to it. Another example where pick whipping properties can come in handy is to do a clock animation. So see, I've got this clock preset I've already made. So let's just highlight this layer and type in hand because I have these two hands big hand and little hand. And using this search bar right here really helps save a lot of time. See, if I just take off this search term and I just open this up, we have a lot of different things in here. But since I've named these big hand and little hand, I can just type in the word hand. And now I have access only to those properties. Pick whip our little hand rotation up to our big hand. And then let's put an expression on our big hand for time times 200. And then we know that our little hand has to go a lot slower and there are 12 hours in a clock. So we'll just come in here and type in divided by 12. If we play it back, we see that the hands are gonna move the way they're supposed to move. And since we have this divided by 12 on our little hand, we can change this to anything we want. So if we want to go even faster, it will always be at the right speed and it will keep up with it. So this is one of those situations you may have like a clock animation and by pick whipping the rotation of the little hand to the big hand and then adding in some math, you can see how this can save you a lot of time. Again, there are no keyframes and this is a super easy way to get this effect. Let's go back over to our pie chart. So since we parented only certain properties, we still have the freedom to do other things. Like we can increase the size of this. We can move it around. So you're not stuck with a child layer necessarily having to follow a parent layer. Instead, you're being more specific. You're pick whipping properties to properties for very specific reasons. So those are just a few examples of how you can pick whip properties. I highly recommend that you experiment with this and see what you can pick whip and the results that you get. And don't forget to add in some mathematical equations. The easiest ones to add in are multiplication and division. Try some of those out and see what results you get. I hope that helped you out. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. And click the bell so that way you're notified every time I upload a new video. Share this video with your friends, colleagues, and coworkers so that they can continue to hone their motion graphics skills as well. And I'd love to see what you're learning from my tutorials, so feel free to drop examples into the comments below. I'd love to get your feedback about this episode and also hear about any topic you would like to see covered. And sign up for my Udemy course, The Power of Shape Layers. It's a comprehensive course that covers literally every aspect of shape layers and it's guaranteed to make you a shape layer superstar. The link to that course as well as to the project file and the notes for this episode are in the description below. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you next time.